Did you see the uh, NBC interview with parts Edward Snowden? Parts of it. Yeah. And, and what, what's your reaction? Well, I think one, I think we've got to ask him questions, more questions. I think we've got to drill into what he actually says. I think too often he's allowed to say something and nobody questions the facts. So I'm a spy. I was a spy for A and B. I, I found that interesting. When, what, I mean, I was, he, so was, he, was he trained as a spy? <laughs> no, I, you know, I just found that out. And so, you know, I wish he'd told me. Uh, what I didn't know is who was he a spy for? Uh, so uh, when oh, things like... Right, so back up. What do you mean? What, who was he a spy well, for? Well, he said he was a spy for CIA and NSA. Yeah. I don't believe for a minute that was true. I think he has really changed, saying, well, I had some, a sensitive assignment once. I did A or B. Mm -hmm. I was trained for a spy. All of a sudden grows into... I was trained as a spy. That's not true. You don't think he, he no. was trained as a spy, at least for the United States? Could he have that's been right. try, trained as a spy for somebody else? Well, I think, you know, that's what General Kalugin uh, alluded to, the former KGB mm -hmm. officer who is now here in the United States, said, you know, if he's in Russia, he's clearly working with the FSB. There's no way they'd let him sit there. His words, not mine. Mm -hmm. Sit there in Russia without some level of cooperation. Do you agree with that? I, I absolutely do agree with that. I don't think he got out of the airport with, without making some agreement. You know, so when you look at it, you know, those are the issues that people need to address. It, to address. Why is he doing this? I think we need to step, take well, it up. Let me just ask you again. If, if in fact, he, he is working for the Russians right now, I guess the question is the timing. I mean, when might he have started, uh, in your view, a relationship with them? Well, that's, we don't know the answer. At least I don't know the answer to that. I think that's what people need to find out. That's what we've got to find out. Um, you can look at several key events that go back. So airport, when he got out of the airport, that's a clear, that's one. What happened when he was in Hong Kong? What happened when he first met the reporters? And what was the control that went into all that? And so there's a series of those things, reporters in January, you know, the right. book, and they talk about that. Mm -hmm. He sent messages in December to Poitras. He did this in January. So when, how, what did he do? And I think it's important to understand, he started taking stuff well before. And so when you look at the timelines of what he was doing, it doesn't match up with his storyline. And so it's, if, if he started taking stuff, I mean, is this, do you think, uh, as he claims, uh, just a matter, matter of his sort of personal conviction that he felt he needed to do this from a personal level? Or do you think he was taking things uh, because someone was encouraging him, helping him along the way, or, you know, promising some uh, asylum down the road if he did do that? I think some combination of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why he took it. But when you think logically, if his intent was to uh, illuminate these two programs, you need two documents. Um, he said, I brought it up to the attention of the officials. When I was at NSA, we couldn't find one except for that one email, that, email was released. that was recent release. It had nothing mm -hmm. to do with him saying he had concerns. It was about his issues on what course that he was going, how do you rate the difference? Should, should the NSA have done more to reach out to him to, to try and address uh, the issues when they you, saw that email? You know, did you read the email? Yeah. The email had nothing to do with his concern over the programs. It had his concern over how do you rate these different applications, a statute, a policy, those kinds of things. It had nothing to do with the metadata. So you program. had no inkling and, that this guy was That's right. A and the, and the general counsel reached out to him and offered that. Right. So when you saw that, they got nothing back. But the key point, that was in April. He gave that issue in April. He had taken most of the documents by then. He had stolen everything by then, just about. And so my comment is that was kind of a, a gratuitous comment. It had nothing to do. He just said nothing about metadata program because he wasn't read into it. How could he come up and say, hey, I'm concerned about this program that I'm not read into, and I have this document that I'm not supposed to have? He so didn't. So do you, in fact, then believe that he is now or was a yeah. double agent. Well, I think he's working for him. I'm, I, I wouldn't go so far as a double agent, but I think he's, he's working for someone. Who? He's working for someone. Here, you know, it seems odd. You know, I, you just you just look at the what's going on, and doesn't it seem odd that he could ask Putin a question? Now, you're a great reporter. Why don't you call up Putin and ask him a question? Let me know if you can get through. How did Snowden get a call to the president of Russia to ask a question like that? 
You think it was all planned? I think it was all planned. They're really they good have at him it. there for a reason. Information ops. I think it's all, that's where it is now. Mm -hmm. So the question is when did it transition to that? Was this something that fell into their lap and they're capitalizing? Or was there more? We don't know. We need to find out. And that's what we need to find out. So the Russians, what about China? I mean, any other countries you think potentially no, uh, involved? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't see, you know, I don't see the indicators towards China. I really don't. I see it more towards Russia uh, and where he ended up. And when you look at where he said he wanted to get to, now, you know, I'm an Army guy, but if you wanted to go from Hawaii to Venezuela, I'm looking it's only 3,000 miles, 4,000 miles that way, or you can go 20,000 miles, go all the way around the world to get there. Something's not right.